They make eye contact. He was a very, very shy person. And the only interesting thing that came out of it, really, because they did this kind of canned Q&A. They had some questions for him that were asked by the audience, but I think they were right. chosen. One kid said, what happened to launch in the Dragon Ball? And he goes, oh, uh, uh, I uh, forgot. <laughs> he totally forgot about launch. Apparently he has a pretty bad memory, too. Which like, I, like you, kind of. Yes. Yeah, I, Chris will admit it. He's like, I forgot. Sorry, dude. I have a terrible memory. <laughs> Where'd the lady go? Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Oh, no, be in camera. No, okay. Hey, so when's the Super Saiyan Showdown rematch? Oh, yeah, I haven't heard much about that. I knew we, that Evo would talk to us a little bit, but I don't know what's going on between them and Funimation, but we are going to do one this year, I hope. All I know is that Evo talked to us, they talked to me, and they made everything clear, and that Sean has been saying, like, I just don't know if I feel comfortable doing it. Uh, he, I never said that. Uh, he says, I'm afraid to take him on again. <laughs> I'm going to be training. Apparently it was all set up, and then Sean is the one that said, I'm terrified to, to compete against Chris again. I'm setting up a Twitch channel to show you my training, but my plan is, is to show you my training, or show the world my training, but then do training off Twitch that I actually use in the, the, the uh, battle. That would be good. Yeah. yeah that's not the assumption. But I shouldn't have told you that, because that would have been the trick. I just ruined it. Here's, here's, here's the assumption. You're going to assume that I'm actually going to watch your Twitch channel. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, that's even better. I get to see Sean in real life. I don't need to watch him. In my spare time, I don't need to watch you doing something else. That's true. It's not like uh, we see... Uh, uh, I get my own personal streaming Twitch channel every time Sean has a question for me, because it's usually long. That's I true. I have quite a lot of detail. He loves to leave messages for me on my phone. I get, really, I get visibly angry when... When I see uh, a news story that says, what you need to know. And I'm like, no, what I need to know is all of it. You don't tell me what I need to know. I will ask the questions on this news story. And I have about 10 more questions after your news story. <laughs> so I don't even watch local news because they condescend to you, talk like you're an idiot, and don't give me all the answers. It drives me nuts. I'm like, shut Tonight's top stories, I'm talking to you like you're an idiot. Like, they always talk, you know, in this condescending way. And I'm like, screw you. I don't know. <laughs> Fake news! No, I'm kidding. I don't. <laughs> it's funny. Um, so yeah, I like to leave Chris long messages. And Tom, where's Tom? I do the same thing to Tom Kroom. Well, he le did he leave? Uh, the guy who was in here before us, Tom. He's one of my agents. Um, he, I leave him long messages, and he also does not like messages. Sean leaves me messages that are so long that I actually forget that it's a message because I'm so used to Sean talking for a long time. <laughs> There'll be mid-message, I go, no, no, I wouldn't do that. That's a, oh, I, okay, actually, <laughs> this is still a message. I, mean, I grew up in the age of tape-recorded answering machines, you know? So I, <laughs> I sort of you, though, but you don't like, you like, you're hip, you're cool. I guess we should take more questions. So I would, <laughs> sure. I think I'm trying to avoid questions, but you're here for questions, and I'm happy to answer them, actually. I just, I think I've been asked so many all week, and my head's gonna explode, but go ahead. It's okay. I, uh, I was just asking, this is just um, for my own benefit. I think that the, uh, the new Dragon Ball fighting game is fantastic, but also that it's kind of universally mispronounced. I mean, why is it not Dragon Ball Fighter Z? And I was curious, when you guys read lines for it, did they, Call it Fighter Z, or do you even remember? Is no, it was it was always Fighters, and when I got it, I thought it was Fighter Z as well. And then I asked the jet, like I asked the client, I'm like, how do we say this? I go, it is Fighters. I'm like, okay. you guys are cool. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's better it's better than some of their other names. There have been some really sure. bad. Bad Budokai, goal. three Tenkaichi, like you have a whole bunch of. Stuff. My favorite was Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry to all the people that employ us to work on these games. I love all your titles. They're all amazing. <laughs> I love everything Dragon Ball. None of it is dumb ever. It's always perfect. And it's always done properly. And the raging no problem. blast, raging blast. We well, they caught that. They, they first of all they put two of my outtakes in Xenoverse. One of which was my, the thing I've been saying since the stupid ad campaign. I always thought the knowing was half the battle is a stupid ad campaign. So then I'd go the other half is the battle, and I'd say that to my friends all the time. And then we, I had knowing is half the battle in the fighter in, in Xenoverse DLC. 
And so I asked, uh, you weren't directing that day, um, was it Steven? Steven. I said, knowing it's half the battle, and the other half is the battle. And they put it in the game, and then it's printed on the screen when he says it, and it's Goku's head. So it looks like, Goku's wisdom, you know? And I'm like, yes! And we totally got it in there. There was another one, too. Oh, yeah, when I said, you'll have a raging blast playing this game or something like that. And I winked at the camera, the virtual camera. Uh, someone else caught that when we snuck that in there. We tend to be a little more uh, playful with the games, I think, don't we? Because the show, we got to be all yeah, because we got to be canon. But we also do, we do some ad living on the show. But and sometimes the game scripts don't make any sense. Oh, that's there's nobody there to help us make it sense of it. So we're like, all right, we're doing it. I, that's where uh, I was directing the guy who played Hit in the video games, and that's where I, the line made literally no sense at all. So I'm like, oh, let's just change it to uh, time to make the donuts or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that stayed. And it stuck. <laughs> yep. Then every once in a while we have that one fan who is so upset that we did that. Like oh, they're yeah. so, and they have no idea what kind of localization hell we go through. Um, in terms of language translation, getting materials on time, secrecy, privacy, you, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, they trust us, but at the same time, they won't tell us because, like, no, we don't want to risk any kind of internet leakage or any kind of hacking, so they wouldn't tell us, uh, again, about the Goku Black when I did the voice, they, they would not, I, it hadn't aired, and they wouldn't tell us anything, I got any more data, like, nope, he's just evil Goku, and I'm like, all right. The most difficult game we worked on was Xenoverse, the very yeah. first one, because there, there was a problem with the translation. Like they sent it out for translation, sent it back to us. We started recording. And what you do when you record these games, you listen to the Japanese first and then you just repeat it in English. And you're supposed to have around this, you know, similar timing if possible. So the Japanese are like, No, it was slower than that. Oh, it depends on the voice. Yeah, because that's well, yeah. If, if it's a- uh, Masako. Uh, well, Masako is very slow. Masako likes really long pauses. She likes too. really long pauses. And then our line will just be like, let's do it. Yeah, and it'll be like, and we're like, what do we do? So there there were some characters like Trunks, for instance, who there's all new stuff because it was all about like the him being a time patroller and the scrolls of time and all this stuff. So Trunks' lines would say like, whatever, I was speaking Spanish, I think. And uh, <laughs> it'd be, they'd talk for like 30 seconds and then his line would be, we have to get the time scroll, it's important. And after, <laughs> after doing this enough, I'm like, all these are coming up so short. So I, then I, we were taking the Japanese, the, I, I noticed the Japanese column in the Excel spreadsheet. They put the scripts in small. the Excel spreadsheets. I think someone had forgotten to wrap the text. So I think what was translated was only the first line of Japanese. And then the rest of it was just untranslated. So that's why they like... Oh, we, we, yeah, that kind of stuff happens, you know? It was pretty bad. Uh, there's, a, there's a funny outtake if you can find it. I guess there was an editing mistake on our end and it just has trunks going like... Um, <laughs> Guys, have you guys heard that one at all? Yeah. It's yeah. It was a. It was. I think it was actually him talking to us outside of the booth. But what cracks me up is like we really are trying to do the best, and then everyone's so hard on us. <laughs> we're like, yeah. like we're we're grappling with time constraints and deadlines and language translations and scripts, and we're trying to do the best we can. And and the hardest part is that they're so secretive about the show. Yeah, that's that a, they that's won't tell problem. you any details. Like with Goku Black, for instance, who's just like, oh, good, Goku Black. Who is it? He is an evil Goku. Like, but is it Goku? Is it like? Is it actually Goku? Is it a different Goku? Like, uh, yes. We, can, we cannot tell you. Oh, they didn't tell you that. No. no. They, and then finally, they, I was like, "Can you at least tell me if Masako Nozawa is doing the voice?" They go, "We will check." And then, yeah. and then they came. Then back. you get an email six weeks later. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's you know it's it's struggling it's a challenge but it's definitely games are still really fun to work on. Fighter Z was probably. Best game I ever worked on. That that game is off the hook. Good. There's been a there's a game that's uh, in, produ Fighters. in production now. I don't know. Has it been announced? I, I uh, yeah, because they did the announcement. It's the one I just worked on. Uh huh. Uh, they uh, Lisa told me they announced it in San Francisco a few weeks ago. That's right. So they were working on a mobile game that looks really. Wait, cool. wait. Which game? It's a mobile game. Oh yeah. Okay. I thought you said vocal game. Like it wasn't that game. Uh oh. No. It's no. <laughs> mobile game. Okay. It's a, it's a like, what's a vocal game? game? It's a game you control the voices. Um, that would be interesting. I've always thought that they should have done that with the, uh, using like the Kinect microphone or something like that to see how loud you could scream as opposed Ooh. to like a two-player screen. 
screaming game to see how loud you can scream. Yes, I like that. Yes, yes. Rager walked by me yesterday. He goes, "Hey, man!" But he's only talking. He goes, "Ah, yeah, there he is." Yeah, he goes. He walks in. There's Chris Rager, the voice of Mr. Satan. He walks by me the other day and he goes, "So, Frank came up to me and said." I'm louder than you. And I said, well, I broke a Neumann TLM 103 diaphragm. And he goes, you win or something. What'd you say? I forgot. You win. I yeah. never broke a diaphragm. <laughs> Josh Martin is also yeah, the voice of Is Boo. that the voice of Majin Buu? Majin Buu. Is and that the voice of Mr. Satan? That's funny. I just was thinking about you. and talk. I just mentioned your name, Chris, and you walked in. Like that's, I, We have a psychic connection, Chris. I think if you all... I've been following you around the entire weekend. Oh, and just hiding? You just don't know it. You haven't seen it. <laughs> I think if you all raised your hands to, to the air and summoned all your power, you could actually summon them to the stage right now. Yeah, you think. could. going to be funny. <laughs> Very funny. I, t I texted him. I was like, guys, this is a really unfunny panel. We need your help. <laughs> Actually, first bed, Chris. Oh, sorry. They had too much energy. I first, I first met these two guys because they were performing in the same comedy troupe as Mike McFarlane, the guy who does the voice of Master Roshi and stuff like that. Uh, and they were all part of the same comedy troupe in Dallas and Section Eight. Do you guys still do some Section Eight shows? Uh, we don't. Okay. We haven't in years, uh, but uh, those were fond memories, fond days of uh, of uh, some some comedy debauchery that we would get into back in the day. You know, we were in our twenties and we thought we were way way funny. And uh, I thought they were pretty funny. Well. We appreciate that, and uh, other people did too. And they came out. And we did all kinds of crazy characters, and some of those characters. Sabbath saw one day and uh, decided to turn into a voice or two in Dragon Ball. In fact, they used to do this bit called the Pillsbury Homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I heard that voice, I'm like, that's Majin Buu's voice right there. <laughs> it's, it's pretty accurate. It's, I don't know if you guys really, do any of you even know what the Pillsbury, home, uh, like Pillsbury Doughboy sounded like? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's him. Josh, you can do it. For you. Nothing says love and like my crescent rolls. <laughs> well, there you go. So the idea was that Pillsbury Doughboy got jumped on his way home from school one day by the Keebler Elves. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that really made him mad and he turned to a gangster rapid right. Doughboy. You had to have a rival gang. It was East Side, West Side, you know, Pillsbury, Keebler. You know. Back in the 90s, you know. Right. Well, there's a 24 hour support number on the back of this. It doesn't call them while you guys do this, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. I can text them. I can text them. Just send a call them. They're calling me. Yeah. I already did. Did you call them? Did you call them? What did they say? <laughs> Who called them? Did you call them? I did. Yeah. Oh, you called them? What did they say? You called the 972 8146 Oh, right. Alright, well, you guys talking. They're going to come say, you didn't move it, did you? Yeah, that's what it's going to be. Other questions, guys? Wait, does it work? Okay, great. This one's for Chris. You may want to call that number. Do we have somebody? She's there. She's just, oh, okay. she's just shout it out to us. I feel a little something is missing, don't you think, Chris? What's missing? <laughs> Which Chris? I'm scared! <laughs> it's getting a little hot in here. Uh, the ice are is you melting. My daughter? <laughs> the ice is melting. Uh oh. I'm, I'm getting scared. <laughs> Could you do a Christoph Giacometti impression for us, please? Ah, Christoph Giacometti. Uh, that's a character. I was sorry. I was so in Dragon Ball mode. Uh, it's a it's a character. Uh, it's Christoph Giacometti. He's from uh, this show called Yuri on Ice, and he's uh, he dances uh, and he skates until he uh, he really loves children. it. He, he, 
He enjoys it so much. There are children. He has a very special finish to all of his moves. <laughs> what did you do to the ice, man? Yeah, I, I melted that ice. It's hot ice. It's Amazon batteries. This is Amazon basics. Those are good batteries, right? Are they? Should be. Should be. We can have some flown in here in just a second. They have a drone. Thank you. You're, what are you I'm doing? I'm doing tech support right now. <laughs> you guys have a panel, huh? I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no lights on. Yeah. Sibilance. Sibilance. Uh, uh. Who else is. No more questions? That guy has a microphone. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask well, for everyone, I guess. What's your favorite moment out of Super or anything after Z or GT has been so far to you know, either record for or just your favorite story moment in general? I was going to ask about anything coming in the future, but I guess apparently you guys don't get to know. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't tell us a whole lot. I mean, the movie was announced, so hopefully that'll be happening this year. Um, but I, as far as anything beyond that, trust me, I've asked them and they go, sorry, we can't help you. <laughs> new batteries and everything, huh? Did you beat us to the batteries? <laughs> I, I, I inserted new batteries. Where did you get those? This random person shot. Oh. <laughs> Scary batteries. We said, everyone give us your energy and they gave us it wasn't as effective with Chris did it. When I called upon the people of Earth to send their energy, it was more effective. <laughs> See, if you, if you summon two AA batteries, you summon... Ah! Oh, wow. I think there's a short in this. Come <laughs> I always wanted to do a Kamehameha like that, where I go so high, I'm just like... now to try this out. Well, because I don't think it would really work on this show, but it'd be I funny. Know. I want to see it now. It'd be... Oh, he's taking big. That's awesome. This is great. I love it. your text. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back in action. I'm ready to participate. Go. <laughs> um, hi, my question is mainly for uh, Christopher Sabat. Yes, that's oh, good. Um, I was just wondering, how does it feel to play a character like Vegeta, who has been all a villain, an anti-hero, and even just a straight-up hero, along with the fact that, you know, he also goes from not caring that his wife and infant son would die in a fiery plane crash, to actually punching the god of destruction in the face just for daring to um, slap his own wife? It was okay. <laughs> you just did such a good job describing everything about Vegeta. Uh, like, needless to say, he's the best character in, in the. He's the best, uh, in my opinion. I just think he's had the best character development of any. I think what you've described is that. Uh, I think the only character development that Goku has really had is that there was a new character called Goku Black. <laughs> Pretty much. That's the best <laughs> development that Goku's had in his character oh, forever. He's a what? That's true. I love that part, actually. That was fun. Anything I'm doing something other than screaming my balls off, I enjoy on the show. And don't get me wrong, I complain about it a lot. And I will admit that once it's finally mixed and I see it, I'm like, yeah. And like, I, I'm glad I did it. But the process is not exactly a. Uh, I'd say, go ahead. My favorite scenes that I ever saw Sean do was this one where Goku's not supposed to be fighting, uh, and then he has to go uh, help out Mr. Satan real quick. Oh yeah! And then Chi Chi shows up and he freaks out, and he like, he goes, Whoa! And he, he, he's flying away, and then he flies off, but then he forgets that he's supposed to have Forget my tractor! Whoa! <laughs> I love that scene with Mr. Satan because I love how he's like, come on, just hit me good, come on, just do it once. He's like, what, what are you talking about? Oh, sorry. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, I actually, I was thinking, I, I never really talked about this before, but I love, I always love the Mr. Satan B storyline, his relationship with the dog. 
I love that storyline, that relationship you have with the dog. That one played out very much in that episode because B was the reason those aliens ran away and I did not have to fight them. That's right, that's right. They were definitely <laughs> afraid of dogs for some reason. They were uh, so lucky me. <laughs> I, really, I really do love them. Those are my favorite scenes. In the, the, and the, now it's the Mr. Satan Boo relationship. They have, they're like bosom buddies now, aren't they? <laughs> it, is, it's a, it is an odd couple sort of relationship. Yeah, they should have their own show, you know, the Mr. Satan Boo show. They live in an apartment together. And they can't, can't, they can't two friends share an apartment without driving each other crazy. Cue up the odd couple music. You know? I would love to see, the, the, that's what they should do next. They should just have it where Mr. Satan and Boo move into an apartment together. Yeah. And then next door are like Vegeta and Yamcha sharing a room. So. <laughs> I love it all right. I mean, I, we Yamcha brought, somebody brought, <laughs> what was that? I said Yamcha wouldn't last five minutes. Well, so. you know, I've always thought, well, someone mentioned the other day, it'd be cool to have like, just little vignette stories along with the episode of just like a little two little three minute, you know, Boo and Satan story over here off the side. We'll get up some laughs, we have some fun, and we can carry on with the story. And then, you know, let's just all uh, tweet about it as often as we can. Maybe we can make it happen. I was just thinking of another thing you could do because I was watching uh, Josh's facial expressions and he almost, you know, he doesn't, he's not uh, as aggressively interjecting in the mic. So I thought, wouldn't it be funny if you did a thing where it's like Chris and Silent Boo, like Jay and Silent Bob, and you just react. Facially, you know, like you are, yes, Chris and Silent Boo. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yes, Satan and Silent Boo. There you go. We're gonna flesh this short, write a, write a pilot right now, green light it. That'd be great, man. I can adapt some Jason Hughes lines. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, more questions. Put some money in my hand. Okay. All right. I'm making a video here, so I'm, uh, before I ask my question, I just want you guys to introduce yourselves and play from, le from left to right, okay? Okay. Okay. From your left or our left? <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead. Just, uh, who's, but who's starting? Are we going to start from one side, though? Yeah, we start with me or start with them? Start with me. So Josh starts. Does Sean start with, like, uh, does he, how long should his intro be? Should it be? <laughs> I mean, how long you want? I'm going to start with like King Kai and then go into some Goku. <laughs> Could you let me know what my framing is too? Like, is it just like I don't know that the light is helping. I was going to say, I, I wonder if lighting, lighting, the lighting, lighting. Don't worry, you look great, man. You look great. <laughs> okay. All right. My name is Sean and I, I'm a voice actor um, and I play Vegeta on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> And it's the best role ever, and I love it, and it, it, because it, it, his role sucks, and, and he's no good. And are you doing that mic or this mic? Wait, what are you doing? Uh, okay. So do we, is it, do we cut here? Do we cut here and then do, are you going to stop it here and then do another intro, or is it, is it just no, one long? I'm going to keep it rolling, I'm going to keep it rolling. Is it? Is that editing software at home, or is that? <laughs> do I? Do I need to slate or anything like that, or before we start, like, uh, is up it just kind of go with it? Up to you, up to you. Back to one, Sean. Yeah, Sean. <laughs> start over. Just he's in for a second. I felt like yours lacked a little energy, so let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's me, Sean. <laughs> uh, how about we skip the introduction? Okay. Wait. I want to test. Oh, now it's back. Oh, cool. How convenient. Um, okay, look, the first two right there is Goku and Vegeta, and uh, I, I, I want to post this to a group so I can settle, settle uh, this argument. Is Dragon Ball GT canon? No. No. You heard it, you heard it here, folks. No. Special Beam is canon. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What was the question? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> um, hey guys, my name is Jordy. Um, I was just wondering. Mr. LaForge. I'm oh, sorry. I'm Dave. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I can't help it. I was wondering since you get most of the source material from Japan, if Zach. Well, we used to not. We used to get it from Mexico. But go ahead. <laughs> That's right. Sure. 
if you guys had any creative control, what would you do differently, or what would you put forth in the future of the franchise? I well, I always fantasize about a show where Goku gets hit on the head and his evil his evil comes back, and then Vegeta has to teach him how to be nice, you know. <laughs> And then they have awkward, like it's totally, he's bad at it, teaching him how to be nice. <laughs> you know? that, that's a fantasy of mine. I, <laughs> I always, Is that uh, button working? I always uh, just, just turned it off. Okay. I always uh, wish that there would be more female stands, but apparently we got some of those. It's super. Uh, let's see, what other, I think they should have done an entire driving school arc. I thought yeah. the driving... <laughs> The driving school episode was way too short. It needed to be like an entire arc. They matched it up with the Brady Bunch driving arc where they don't have the egg is on the cone and they can't knock the egg off the cone on the Brady Bunch episode. I vaguely I'm remember. Old. Yeah. Your parents Sorry. your parents used to watch this uh, TV show called The Brady Bunch, so <laughs> ask them about it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I'm like a little bit like the Boo and Satan sort of vignettes. I always had this idea of sort of like you know, Hercule, single father, raising his daughter, you know, like a, kind of like a father's no, father knows best type of thing where Hercule drop leaves knowledge uh, to his child, along with Boo. How Pretty much how your actual life is? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was quite like that in, in How would you, how would you make the show? Oh, de I definitely uh, Boo and Satan, Odd Couple spinoff. <laughs> yes. If they won't do it, I, I may do it and, and, and work on a cease and desist letter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have to make us stop. Yeah. <laughs> so this is totally off topic, but I, I it's it's very rare that you get to like do stuff like go to a convention like this and sit in a green room that has people that you recognize in it from other shows. And I have to and I don't know if there's I don't sign in the NDA to not talk about anything that happens behind that. So I'm going to tell you the funniest thing that happened this afternoon. I watched the guy who plays MacGyver um, have a difficult time operating the coffee machine. <laughs> I just, that will always, I will cherish that memory forever. I remember him looking, at like it was one of those Carrick things, that he, well, he was opening it up and something was wrong with it, and I, it took everything in my power not to go like, certainly you can figure out a workaround here. <laughs> Sorry, don't, don't tell him I said I told you that. <laughs> oh my god. That's hilarious. That's awesome. <laughs> I was going to ask you about the uh, tractor line, Earth and Rally, but we already went over that one. So for Chris Sabat, yes. I want to know the story behind the It's Cheese line, the infamous It's Cheese line from when you from one of the episodes you're talking with Beer. That was in the script. That was in the script? Yeah, we didn't improvise that, actually. No. That was in the Japanese script, yeah. Yeah, that was a big deal. Like, uh, and it wasn't very hard. Oddly enough, I only did one take of that um, because I really knew how I wanted to say it, and also I'm the director, so I can do whatever I want. Um, but but I, I felt very comfortable with my read because all you had to do is like imagine what, how how Vegeta would say a line where they're trying to get some actual training from some godly type people, but they keep getting interrupted by some guy who wants to know what that gooey substance is on this pizza or something like that. So I just imagined Vegeta being just super annoyed. It's cheese, come on! Just let me just do anything else. Uh, yeah, I love that line. I actually have a sign in my office that says, it's cheese. <laughs> well, All right, then. There was another outtake. Uh, that was not in the script. We'd like to add little things every now and then. Uh, there was this scene where Vegeta was supposed sitting out on like on a, a deck or whatever, and Bulma comes out to him and says, "Hey, we should go see everybody hanging out at the party. You're not just gonna sit here like a curmudgeon, just sitting here on your chair here." She's like, "Come on, let's go see everybody." And I, I inserted the real response was supposed to be, "I don't want to go to some stupid party or whatever," and I changed it to, "Yeah, sure, let's go see Yamcha." <laughs> Because I have this really, like, in my brain, I think it's the funniest thing that Yamcha still hangs out. He's like the ex-boyfriend that won't go away. <laughs> and for someone like Vegeta, even, with anger issues as it is, like, just having that ex-boyfriend just hanging around, you know that he's, like, when nobody's looking, he just punches Vegeta in the balls or something. He punches uh, Yamcha in the balls every now and then. It's like, I swear it happened, man! It was really cool. I did knock out Yamcha with that baseball, the baseball episode. Oh, that was, that was pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So Chris, after all these years of working with Sean, how does it feel to now be playing a character in a new show that looks like Sean half the time and looks like Goku half the time in Mike's Hero Academia? Oh. <laughs> You're talking about uh, All Might's big hair? Oh, I didn't know that. I haven't seen that show yet. Yeah, I finally have hair large enough to compete with Sean. <laughs> it's a good feeling. <laughs> she makes the mistake of letting them have the mic instead of holding it like Donahue or somebody. And you really should never let anyone have the mic because you never know. It's too much power. <laughs> She keeps doing it, and it makes me nervous. <laughs> and I just want her to stop. She disappeared. She disappeared. She squatted over in the corner. What are you doing over there, lady? <laughs> I know, but where's what's the next question? You're oh, oh. <laughs> You're in the back row. There's no cameras. There's no cameras. What are you talking about with the cameras? Are you in trouble with the law? Yeah, you just keep trying to hide the cameras. You're wearing stripes. That's why. You're upset that you're wearing stripes on camera. That's right. <laughs> I feel like that dude just popped up. Popped up his elbow and bugged my coat. <laughs> a giant dude stands up. She was in front of me. Yeah. I was. <laughs> She's like, I will let you guys finish your stupid banter and then I will start my question. Look at her. She's got such attitude already. I like it. And she's not having it. She's not asking it either. No. <laughs> Let's be honest, we all know why we came to this convention, but first, I need everyone to concentrate their energy. I think she rehearsed that. <laughs> What's happening here? I have the power! Alright, Chris, what does the scouter say about everyone's power level? Oh uh, yes, the scouter is a device that's used by the Saiyans. They wear it upon their eye and it gives them all sorts of details. It can tell you weather information, their heartbeat, their I think it also has Alexa! <laughs> Alexa, turn on my space bar! Uh, Alexa, what's that power level? It gives you a variety of information. It seems to also have some sort of translation information on the screen. As a and bunch a bunch of, of triangles! Lots of triangles and squares in case you forget what those are in the native language. It also can tell what power level someone has. Power uh, level. The, the power level depends on the person. It can be as low as a one. It can be as high as two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty thousand. Can be as high as a pepper. <laughs> like a ghost pepper. <laughs> Those are hot. You're welcome. She, look, look, look on her face, just like that she is a, not yeah, having an answer. <laughs> not what I wanted. <laughs> exactly what I wanted. Okay, good, good. <laughs> I would love to see a sketch where Vegeta's really frustrated with Alexa. Alexa, what's the temperature outside? Or something, or just some kind of improvising with Alexa, and then he just blasts the device, you know? That's actually me with Alexa. They, there is a feature on Alexa that's called Breathe Mode, which allows, it, when you ask it a question, it'll just go booty, and then do what it's supposed to do. That's only available on some devices. Mine doesn't. So I'll go like, Alexa, turn off the kitchen light. And it goes, okay, I'll do that. I'm like, shut off. I don't think <laughs> Oh, remember I was on the phone with you and I was driving and I was trying to, and Google does this shit where it goes, it goes, turn right onto this, da, 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 and then I go, you don't need to tell me to continue, I'm already on the road, why do you need to tell me to continue on the expressway, I'm going to be on the expressway, of course I'm going to continue on the expressway, and I was on the phone with Chris and I was listening, I'm, shut up Google, just tell me to turn right, and shut the fuck up, like, continue on for 3.5 miles, I, don't, I know that, it drives me insane. Sean really literally was just like mid-sentence. He's yeah. talking about something, all of a sudden he gets so angry about <laughs> Google. You're just, Sorry, it's in my ear right now. Hold on. This is so stupid. Why is Google even working? Why is Google telling me every freaking inch I'm going? Like, shut up. Anyways, I was like, there's a mute button. <laughs> okay, guys, we have time for one more question. I saw this hand first, so I'll come up here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the last convention up here, we talked about Vegitos. Yes. Is that actually a thing now? Have people actually given you Vegitos? Because we thought about Vegitos? it. Vegitos? You're talking about like cereal? Vegitos? No, like I eat? They're, they're, yeah. they're Cheetos, but. Oh, Cheetos. Were, were, were they spiky flavor? Or were they spiky? Were they Super Saiyan flavor? What are you talking about? <laughs> Your name's Becky and it's Super Saiyan flavor, if it was all I heard. My name's Becky and it's Super Saiyan flavor? <laughs> I talk fast too, but I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Yes. 
you were on this tangent about Cheetos and them being super spicy and you called them Bud Cheetos. I don't even remember that. That's that. <laughs> So you want Vegito's really bad. <laughs> but I'm thinking of it as a cereal now, like Vegito's, over 9,000 grams of sugar. Vegito's are awesome as well. They're per bite. They taste like the mascot would be like Chester Vegeta. Yeah, Chester Vegeta, and he's not cool. Not like we know, he's, not, he's very upset. Like he's not having it. He's being chips and coke, I don't care. Yeah. Vegito's can only be found on the highest shelf. <laughs> Above all other snack foods. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> Is that the final question about Vegito's? But he has one comment really quick. It's the final comment. Oh, sorry. The artist in the artist alley who's doing, who does cereal boxes. Like, <laughs> you gotta go get one made. <laughs> See, I don't know if they'll do it for you, but he actually might need it. They'll do it for him. <laughs> I don't know where Let's he's, go. He's got a huge buy, like he's got a huge one. It's just all cereal box art for different oh, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I want, I want to see that. <laughs> it's, it's up in the dealer room, you said? Uh, Artist Alley. Artist Alley. Artist Alley. I might have to find that. You know, we were talking about uh, GPS, and it just reminds me. I Do you have a GPS mode that has Chris in it? I recently, for my own fun, made uh, a GPS, because someone said something to me on Twitter uh, about like how Zora would have, uh, like, be a terrible voice to be on uh, uh, the on Waze? He has no no sense of direction, so I made one on Waze. So it's like... Uh, Wait, do you have it? It's it's like... Uh, uh, let's see if it'll even play right now. Hold on a minute. Will it even play? Is it loud enough? Why Somebody's calling you. Hold on. <laughs> I, for some reason, every time I try, <clears throat> try to press up on my volume button, it does not want to go... Oh, uh, there we go. Here's some volume. I swear I know how to use my damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. <coughs> Don't get the iPhone 10, guys. Uh, a second or so. Uh, let's see. Deep left, I think. <laughs> Turn right. I mean left. Left, I think. So, so it's like the most confusing GPS. Can you add? Can you add your own voices in ways? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm using yeah. ways now, and I'm putting all kinds of voices in. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be great. I'm gonna get you to put some voice in it too. Oh, I'll send you some. Oh, that. Oh, I love it. Oh, really? Oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I want to thank Chris Rager and Josh Martin for joining us on. Hey, thank you all for having us. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. I know we gotta get out of here, but that was so much fun. Thank you for coming up, guys. And speaking of directions, find your way down to the Vendor's Alley or the Exhibitor's Hall. They do have booths for autographs, pictures, stuff like that. So give them a warm thank you for coming out to our Thank you all. Thank you. And we ask that you do stay in your seat for just one second, okay? Stay seated so we can leave. Yes. <laughs> so you can see our procession. Uh, we are going to go be, go, uh, we're going to sign for the last two hours a day. If you want to go and see uh, Chris and Josh, if you're not aware, they're at booth 1002 on the dealer floor. It's uh, like kind of not too far from where we are. Yes, we yes. the acting school we graduated from this booth and uh, come by see us and acting. sign up for uh, sign up for a chance to win a free voice acting class.